morning, everybody. <laughs> Thanks, Simon. <laughs> yeah. Welcome this morning. I am reading out of Psalms 40, verse 5, which says, You have multiplied, O Lord my God, your wondrous deeds and your thoughts toward us. None can compare with you. I will proclaim and tell of them, yet they are much more than can be told. Yeah. Uh, this morning, we'd like to welcome Bushe, who is new. Uh, if you see her, you must just give her a hug and warm greetings. Hello, but to Bushe. everyone else who's also <laughs> old, uh, old we is gold. Things. We know things. We get told. This. Yeah. It wasn't the spirit. <laughs> Sheldon told us, yeah, and don't freak out. But all of you look beautiful also. Uh, and the men too. I feel like men don't get compliments That's enough. That's right. We're beautiful too. <laughs> but anyway, please stand on your feet so that we can start to worship. And let's close our eyes. My father, you are so welcome this morning. Yes. This week, I was reflecting that when we were in primary school, Auntie Anne used to tell us to say, welcome Holy Spirit to this place. And so... Close to 16 years later, my father, I remembered that. We realized that sometimes the seeds that are planted don't sprout immediately, but they sprout. And so we say welcome now, this morning, as we worship. It's not about us. It's not about our theatrics or our, our anything. Lord, we direct all our focus, all our affection to you. Because you are... You say in your word, you sing over us, and you love us so deeply. My God, we want to, this morning, reflect on your wondrous deeds that you've multiplied. And as we worship to say, Father, we give you all the praise. In the mighty name of Jesus, amen. Hear our prayer this morning, Lord Jesus. As we lift up our hands. Will you meet us here as we call on your name, Yahweh? Will you meet us here when we come to this place to worship you, God, mercy and grace? Sing it again. As we lift up
Thank you that you give us hope. Thank you that you come near to us when we come near to you. We give you
amazing love that welcomes me the kindness of mercy that bought with blood wholeheartedly my soul and deserving God is so good God you're so As people said amen. amen. Woo. Let's just take a seat just for a sec.
right. Good morning, everybody. So good to see you guys. And uh, yeah, it's, I really like uh, everybody's scared of the front row this week. It's everybody's sitting at the back. Um, but good to see you guys this morning. And uh, I know we're going to have a good time with the Lord. We already have. And uh, really believing for more for the Lord to speak to all of us, even the children as they go to Sunday school. I like to observe people as they come into church this morning. And um, where is Jermaine now? Has he disappeared? Oh, there he is. Jermaine, exam stress can't be that bad, hey? Just stand up there, young man. And then you can just, uh, this guy had hair last week. He's writing his matric finals. When are your finals starting? Tomorrow. That's exactly why you've been thinking too hard. Jermaine, stay standing. Anybody else who's going into their, their final exams of the year, you don't just have to be in matric. Um, stand up. We'd like to pray for you guys. If you're writing your final exams, it can't just be. Yeah, I can point you guys out. We know there's lots more. I have Lily standing up at the top there. So, Burel, no exams for you. Sorry? You're writing your learners tomorrow. That counts, Alison. That counts. <laughs> so, yeah, yeah. Oh, goodness. Sorry, Alison. Oh, did he shave because of the cancer thing? Ah, uh, all right. So, good, good for you, young man. But we still want to pray for you. I didn't think it was exam stress. I'm sure there was a reason, but uh, yeah. So let's just raise our... Salome, what are you writing? Oh, you too, Usha. Four? Oh, you're standing... Uh, good. So uh, Usha's standing in for Dante. That's good. So we need to... Because we need to cover all these guys in prayer. So let's just pray for them. Unfortunately, young people, I cannot pray that you get this miraculous download. But what I can pray is that whatever you have studied, God will bring it back to memory for you and that you will be able to put it on the paper the way the examiner wants it to be. So, Father, we pray for these young people, Lord. Uh, exam time is not fun time. Fun time is after the exams. But I pray, Lord, that as they write exams now, Lord, you said whatever we do, we do it with all of our heart, not for man but for God, and they can glorify you even in the exams, Lord. So I pray, Father, that you would help them, Lord, to just have the perseverance to study the concentration to study, Lord, that they would not be distracted by all those other little things that somehow miraculously distract us during exam times, those things we never wanted to do, we suddenly do them. May they not happen, Lord. May these guys stay focused for the next couple of weeks, Lord. And as they study, Lord, I pray that their brains would always just be fresh and, and be like sponges and absorb information, Lord. And when it comes to putting it back down on paper, that they would put it down on paper the way the examiner is expecting it to be. May it line up with the memorandum, Lord. And may they have great results, Lord. And may you be glorified. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. All right. And then, uh, yeah, um, I really want to pray for um, Mdu and Khansi this, this morning. They, uh, but you guys can just, do you guys want to come up to the front as a family? Why not? Uh, Hansi is going back to her home country of Lesotho just for a few weeks, just to go visit up in the mountains. Do you must be so excited, hey? Because the cell phone doesn't work there for many reasons, but one of them that the cell phone doesn't work. Um, Lily, can I walk downstairs? Yeah. So let's just pray for them. It's quite a journey. Whoops. They have a new prime minister as well in Lesotho, so you're going to go celebrate. What do you call yourselves, Lesotho? What? What? Do you Basutu. There we go. And so she's going to go celebrate with them. But let's just pray because um, they're looking forward to this rest and also just to be the light in that village and love on everybody there. So, Father, we pray for Mdu and Khansi and family. And we pray, Lord, that as they travel tomorrow morning early and start this journey to go visit her family, Lord, that, Lord, even from the second they get in the car, Lord, May your presence just be in the car, Lord. May they just have so much joy in their going, and they're going to have joy in their coming. They're going to have joy as they received in their back in the village. Um, Lord, may they just have a great time. Lord, I pray that your presence would go and not leave them. I pray, Lord, that they would leave a footprint in the village when they, when they leave, and that, that people will say, wow, we have experienced the light of Jesus through Mdu and Khansi. 
But Lord, I also pray that they would rest and they would rest well and they would rest in your presence. Would you bless them with that rest? We pray in Jesus' name. So traveling mercies, pray, Lord, that you would protect them on the road um, in Jesus' name and that their car will not give them any hassles in Jesus' name. It would work the way it is designed to work in Jesus' name. Amen. All right, so if you don't see him doing Khansi in the next couple of weeks, it's just because they're visiting family. So when you see, when you miss them, remember to pray for them. So, yeah. And uh, we already uh, greeted Bootle this morning. It's her first time in church. Is there anybody that's your first time in church this morning? Derek and Heloise are visiting us this morning. Nobody else, your first time in church? We need to remedy that. We need to at least have one person stick their hand up every week. Otherwise, um, yeah. But Bootle, what happens now after church, just wave your hand so everybody knows who you are. What happens after church is now that you've been identified, you get tackled after church and you have to drink a cup of coffee with every single person. But luckily, I know you like coffee, so <laughs> no, we won't make you drink that much. But, but please go introduce yourself to him. All right, we're going to stand. The children, you guys may go to Sunday school. And um, yeah, go hear from the Lord there, and you come back and tell us how things are supposed to happen. So um, follow Malachi and Gabriel there. And um, I love watching the children walk out because there's always just way more. Jermaine, I really hope you're going to help. Okay, just, just. And then we're going to stand and we're going to just continue to worship the Lord. And uh, this, is, this is the part of the service where we give you an opportunity to bring your tithes and offerings to the front. And just be joyous as you give to the Lord this morning. Be cheerful in your giving. And just... It's between you and God and may it be part of your worship this morning. Thank you. All right, let's stand. We're going to hand back over to the team.
Take me into your presence. I love, I love, I love you, Jesus. I love, I love, I love your presence. The world can wait. I need to stay a little longer in your presence. Yeah. The world can wait. I need to stay a little longer in your presence. I need your word. Come wash over me. Yes, I need your word. Come wash over me. Yes, I need your word to come wash over me. I need your truth. You said. to stay a little longer in your presence. I need to stay a little longer in your presence. My friends can wait. I need to stay Everything else can wait. I need to let your word wash over me. I need to let your truth come and set me free. I
in your presence. There is fullness of joy. And him the Son sets free is free indeed. Free indeed. By your Spirit, you make us holy as you are holy, set apart. Set apart, not just from sin, but from everything in the world. But you set us apart for yourself, for your pleasure. You set us apart as yours. You make us yours. You make us holy. Spirit of Jesus, living within us, never to fail or forsake. Unending Heaven inside us whispers the sound of your Yahweh. Holy, holy is the Lord, worthy to be
hear the word roaring as thunder with a new future to tell for the dry season is over there is a cloud beginning to swell to the skies heavy with blessings
remember every promise given to you, every promise given to this body, every promise given to this country. Allow the Holy Spirit to just come up in your head and just speak to you about every promise that He has given you, every promise He's given this body, every promise He's given your children, every promise He's given your business, every promise He's given this country and Africa. We remember every promise. We do not forget any of them. Remind us, Lord Jesus, where we have where we have allowed the enemy to steal your promises. Let it be done, oh, let it be done, amen, Yahweh, let it be done, in my life, Lord, let it be done, yeah. ourselves to your word we submit ourselves to your pre- your presence your your spirit we submit ourselves to your will we know that every word that comes out of your mouth has a harvest but nothing comes back without a harvest so everything that you've spoken over us we look to you we look to you like a cloud we receive your rain, Jesus, Yahweh, we receive your rain, O oh, Holy Spirit, we receive your rain. Minister to our hearts where we are sore. We ask you, Holy Spirit, where disappointment or stupidity has caused us to forget your promises. Have mercy on us. We choose to receive everything that you have for us. Let's just sing that last verse. And with great anticipation, we await the promise to come. Everything that you have spoken will come to pass. Let it Father, as we get into your word this morning, when we sang just now, Lord, you are good to me, I just want to say, Father, I believe those words, that you are not just good, but you are good to me, and you're good to every person in this congregation, Lord, you're good to everybody who believes in the gospel of Jesus Christ, who has accepted Jesus Christ as their Lord and Savior. Lord, I get excited thinking about the fact that there's churches in Petra Teeth this morning that are preaching out of your word, preaching truth, talking about you, Jesus, preaching about you. And I pray, Lord, that you would bless those churches this morning, that your word would go out and really bear seed, Lord. Lord, we think about Luke 10, verse 2, that's... um, says we must pray to the Lord of the harvest. 
because the harvest is plentiful and the workers are few. Open our eyes to that harvest, Lord. May we hear your calling to the workers. And we thank you, Lord, that when seed is sown, it can reap a harvest 30, 60, and 100 fold. So we're excited about your word this morning, Lord. We're excited about what you're doing in and around us. Lord, I've seen so much of you this week. Just as you've touched people's lives and just I just felt my hunger grow for more of you, Lord. May we all experience that. You are good to me. You are good to us. Thank you, Father. Amen. Good morning, everybody. Knowledge, I see you arrived. How are you? You're the man. Now, the only reason I'm picking on your knowledge is because you said you wanted to get baptized. Are you still ready for that? Okay, awesome. We won't do it now, though, so you can relax. And, um, yeah. Um, yeah, trust you guys had a good week. Um, I, saw, I saw the Lord do so many good things in people's lives this week and, and really just... Um, got to a place where I just felt blessed again to have a front row seat to watch what God is doing in other people's lives. And you know when it's not fake, you know when it's really God touching somebody's life, and it's, it's pretty exciting. So, um, Have you ever, um, a, wha- wha- a comedian that I like to listen to, he has a skit where he talks about um, how people are always looking for things, and they always say, I found it in the last place I looked. And so his, his whole skit goes about, you know, you know, you find it, but you carry on looking for it. Just, but obviously, you found it in the last place you looked, hey? And um, I, d- I don't know if you ever do what I did, but this week again, um, I was looking for, for registration papers for a trailer that I, I own but don't. And, uh, but I have the registration papers. And, uh, but I couldn't find the registration papers. You know you need that registration paper, else it means nothing. You have to go to the licensing department and f- pay 500 rand just for them to print out that piece of paper. So it's, it's 500 rand I didn't feel like spending again. So I was looking for this paper and I searched high and low and then I gave up and then I started searching for it again. And I was sitting on the floor in our office. Chris and I have this little uh, room which we call our office, but it's more like um, a storeroom. And um, I was sitting on the floor and I'm like, Sheldon, you idiot. You should have prayed about this long time ago. Why didn't you just ask the Lord to show you where this piece of paper is? And so I stopped right then and there, and I was like, Lord, you know everything. Where is this piece of paper? And I want to tell you that it's not the first time I've done this, where the Lord has showed me exactly where something is that's been lost. And so I prayed, and I asked the Lord, where is this piece of paper? And as I'm praying, I look and there's a box under the table. And uh, it's, this, box doesn't, this box has got other people's stuff in it, not ours. And uh, what do I see in the box? The piece of paper. True story. I mean, I think about all the time I wasted when I could have just spent time asking God, where is this thing, this piece of paper, you know, Lord, and, uh, and I could have found it within five minutes. But instead, I spent like two days searching for this piece of paper. And, uh, and I've really done this many times in my life. And I shared a story many years ago of um, when I was young, and it's something I had to repent of. But, um, and I, I'm going to do that and go straight into my next verse, but, uh, my first verse. But um, by the way, I'm talking about standing firm today. And it's just because it comes out of one of the scriptures we're reading. And, um, but... Uh, I remember when I was a kid, I, lived, I grew up in Natal, so, uh, you know, the land of the Zulus. And part of our, our, our history lessons was they took us to one of these Zulu villages. And uh, they were teaching us about this lady who can, she's a Sangoma. And, and the, the lady who's doing the tour says, you know, if you've lost something, she can tell you where it is. And, uh, and I remember thinking, man, I lost that little truck of mine. Because I was young, I had my favorite little uh, dinky toy, and it was a little bulldozer. I loved that thing. That was the only toy I ever played with. And 
and it just went missing. I, my sisters wouldn't have taken it. I hope not. And I thought, you know, I need, a, I need to ask her where this thing is. And I'm so grateful today that I never had an opportunity to ask her because I think if I'd asked her, I would have opened the door to lots of trouble, demons, all sorts of things. So I praise the Lord for that. But many years later, I was thinking about it, and I asked the Lord, so Lord, do you know where that thing is? And he told me where it was. He told me who took it and hid it from me. I could have just asked him straight up. Maybe as a kid that wouldn't have helped. But if you lose something, we go to God first, hey? If you have a problem in your life, what do you do? Do you try to sort it out yourself or do you let God sort it out for you? I mean, I say it from the front here like it's easy to do. Like, I just let God sort out your problems, TK. I mean, he'll, yeah, it's easier said than done. I, I don't always do that. I wish I could say that I never stress about things. But I, I'm slowly learning to, to give it over to God. And um, so, so let me read a few things I wrote here, and then I'm going to get into Isaiah. Miles, you'll be able to put it on up. So um, part of it is taking battles into our own hands as well, hey? Standing firm is not being indecisive. In fact, that is as decisive as it gets. Sometimes we just stop the bus and we're like, now I'm going to pray about it, I'm going to let God take over, and we see it as, no, that's just giving up. No, it's not giving up. It's not being indecisive. It's the best thing we can do. Um, we look at the world around us and we quickly get overwhelmed by everything that's going on, hey? I mean, if we just look at the things that is going on in the world today, I make the mistake of reading world news every now and then, and it just looks, it looks crazy hectic out there. And I get overwhelmed by these things. But I shouldn't get overwhelmed by these things because I serve a big, big God who can fight my battles for me, who can use us to be the light in this world and the world can be changed. Isaiah 8, verse 19 and 22. This is a scripture I was kind of minding my own business reading the Bible in my office this week and I found this scripture and uh, I thought I'm going to add it to my sermon because it goes with my little story of my truck. Isaiah 8, verse 19 and 22 says this, When someone tells you to consult mediums and spiritists who whisper and mutter, should not people inquire of their God? Why consult the dead on behalf of the living? Consult God's instruction and the testimony of warning. If anyone does not speak according to words, his words, to this word, they have no light. Uh, another version actually talks about the scriptures. Distressed and hungry, they will roam through the land, and when they are famished, they will become enraged, and looking up will curse their king and their God. Then they will look toward the earth and see only distress and darkness and fearful gloom, and they will th be thrust into utter darkness. How much consulting goes on nowadays where, where we consult others but we don't consult God? Consult God's instruction and testimony of warning. It's actually a scary verse 21 that says, those who consult in mediums and spiritists who are not consulting in God, distressed and hungry, they will roam through the land when they are famished. And they will become enraged and looking upward will curse their king and their God. And it's actually their gods, whoever they worship. Because they're not worshiping God. So we should never consult mediums or spiritists, no matter how desperate we are. And you know how many times believers have confessed to me that they came to the end of the rope and they thought that this is the only way out and they did it. And they consulted somebody they shouldn't have. Somebody who consults the dead. Somebody who prays to another God. Romans 8.34 says this, Who then is the one who condemns? No one. Christ who died more than that, who was raised to life, is at the right hand of God and is also interceding for us. Okay? How cool is that? So where's Jesus right now, church? Is at the right hand of the Father, and what's he doing? He's interceding for us. 
PK, who would you rather have intercede for you? Yeah. No disrespect to our ancestors or anything, but I'd rather have Jesus interceding for me than my gran. So, because she can just enjoy heaven now, as far as I'm concerned. <laughs> Hopefully she's not thinking about me. But that's what people do, and they're consulting these mediums and spiritists who aren't actually talking to ancestors, but are talking to demons that make themselves look like ancestors or sound like ancestors. They knew their ancestors, so they're familiar with those things. Jesus, that's who intercedes for us. So when it comes to standing firm, church, we don't consult mediums and spiritists. We don't consult the dead. We shouldn't even consult man <laughs> sometimes. You can consult man when you've got a group of brothers or sisters in Christ that you know love the Lord as much as you do, do if not more, and that are as fearful for his word as you are, or if not more. Then you can talk to your brothers and sisters in Christ and consult them. But there's a story in Second Chronicles 6, uh, 16, 9, 7 to 9, uh, and it says this, At that time, Hanani, the seer, came to Asa, the king, Asa, <laughs> Asa, that sounded bad, a Asa, the king of Judah, and said to him, Because you relied on the king of Aram and not on the Lord your God, the army of the king of Aram has escaped from your hand. See, Asa, the, this king, went to King Aram and actually asked him for help because he relied on this man. And he goes on to say, were not the Cushites and Libyans a mighty army with great numbers of chariots and horsemen? Yet when you relied on the Lord, he delivered them into your hand. For the eyes of the Lord range throughout the earth to strengthen those whose hearts are fully committed to him. You have done a foolish thing and from now on you will be at war. That's a warning to us, church. When we consult man or even trust man to fight your battles for you or the situation you're in. I did that so many times. I was in a situation where I needed something and I'd pray and ask the Lord to help me. But in my mind, I'm thinking, Lord, just send that guy. I know he can help me. Now I'm trusting man and not God. So this king, he did it right once. He was surrounded by this army and then he relied on the Lord and the Lord handed this, the enemy to him. But the next time it came, he, he relied on a man. And so the Lord said that wasn't right through, his, through the prophet. You have done a foolish thing and from now on you will be at war. Maybe if you're at war your whole life, it's because you're not trusting God and you're trusting man. Listen, man will always let you down. God will not. Jeremiah 17, 5 to 9. This is what the Lord says. So I'm going to let Scripture do most of the talking today, by the way. I'm going to color it in a little. Cursed is the one who trusts in man, who draws strength from mere flesh, and whose heart turns away from the Lord. Because in actual fact, that's what we're doing. We're turning away from the Lord if we turn to man for help. Remember, we say we, God is a jealous God. And he's a good, good father, hey? Eh? That person will be like the bush in the wastelands, and they will not see prosperity when it comes. They will dwell in parched places of the desert, in salt land where no one lives. But blessed is the one who trusts in the Lord, whose confidence is in him. They will be like a tree planted by the water, that send out its roots by the stream. It does not fear when, it, when heat comes. Its leaves are always green. It has no worries in the year of drought and never fails to bear fruit. The heart is deceitful above all things and beyond cure. Who can understand it? Who would you rather be? The man who trusts in man or the man who trusts in the Lord? 
Psalm 20, verse 7, I, I like this scripture. It says, some trust in chariots and some in horses, but we trust in the name of the Lord. We trust in the name of the Lord. Those weren't easy words to say back in those days because any army that had horses and chariots was pretty much an army that was going to win. And to say that I don't trust in horses or chariots, I trust in the Lord, was a big thing to say. But we need to come to a place in our life where we trust in the Lord, in Him only. I'll give you an example now. 1 Samuel 30 verse 6 uh, I shared the story once before. Remember, David's off fighting battles, and then they send him back to his hometown, and when he gets back to his village, the, the village has been plundered. Everything's gone, burnt down to the ground. Wives, children, everything gone. Cattle, sheep, everything's gone. David's men, David and his men were greatly distressed. David was greatly distressed because the men were talking of stoning him. This was their leader, David, and he's led them away, and now this has happened. All their wives and children and everything's gone too. So David was greatly distressed because the men were talking of stoning him. Each one was bitter in spirit because of his sons and daughters. But David found strength in the Lord. How cool is that? But David found strength in the Lord. And you are more than welcome to go read the rest of that story at home and see what happened. But David found strength in the Lord. So recently, one of my headaches at church has been, um, has been these gutters in the church. And uh, I don't know if you guys have noticed, but for years, our little um, ceiling boards have been falling out. And whenever there's rain, it rains in church. And even though we say, let it rain, I don't think that's what the Lord, that's not what we meant. And the Lord knows that. And uh, so over the years, had a few people come and help me fix these gutters, because there's a gutter that runs the length of that of that um, opening, and it's, it's pretty big. It's deep, you know. Many years ago, we, we, s we spent some big bucks, and uh, we put in stainless steel gutters and paid big bucks for the things. We thought all our problems are gone, and um, they came back. And um, so, so this is a nightmare for me because I actually, I believe this is the temple. This is the Lord's house, and we can, we can make it look nice. We, we should be good stewards of what the Lord's given us. And so I looked at this, and I was moaning every week. The black bag, by the way, they forgot there. <laughs> so every week I remind them, and they're like, yeah, yeah, we're going to get it. But they've actually closed the roof up, so we're going to have to get it from this side. So anyway, um, if that's ever bothered you. Um, so a while ago, I was walking around the church property, and um, I was praying, and I said to the Lord, Lord, this has really become a headache for me. I, I don't know what to do anymore about this. Lord, I need somebody who's going to get serious about these gutters and fix them. And the Lord dropped a name into my head. It's like, oh, let me try this guy. So I phoned the guy and had him come and meet me here at the property, and he got up on the roof. And when he got up on the roof, I immediately realized this guy knows exactly what he's talking about when it comes to roofs and gutters. And he showed me all the mistakes that the previous guys had done or taken shortcuts. Or and, um, and he's fixing the roof. So it's in the process of getting fixed, and uh, we're just waiting for some decent rain. We're praying with the farmers for rain now. Before we were praying that it didn't rain, um, just because we didn't want the church to leak. But, um, but they're in the process of fixing it. But what gave me so much joy is that the Lord gave me the name. But the story continues. And I don't know how to tell this story in church because um, it, it, the story has a swear word in it. But anyway. <laughs> so two, a couple of weeks later, these guys are fixing the roof. And I'm walking around the church property again. And I'm like, Lord, will you give this guy the wisdom to fix this roof properly? Fix it for once and for all. We want to put these things back. We want it to look nice. We want to scrape the walls and get the water out the walls. And, um, and uh, probably half an hour later, I find myself on the roof talking to the, the guy that's working on the roof. And, um, and uh, he says to me, um, he says to me, hey, don't worry. Peter will do a bleeping good job. <laughs> and I felt the Lord say to me, you got peace now? I was like, I've got peace, and you've got a sense of humor, Lord. 
But I was trusting in man up until that point to fix this. And then I just handed it over to the Lord. And we have the right person fixing it. Maybe there's other guys that could also do it. But I think this is the guy the Lord wanted to fix our roof. So anyway, and that's pretty exciting. So that's my little story about the roof. And so if you're worried about scaffolding in the church and stuff, it's, um, yeah, it, it'll be gone one day. So. so King Asa had a son. And so, like, like Scripture says, he was at the war for the rest of his life. He had a son, Jehoshaphat. Okay? And uh, apparently there's a song about this story. Some, some artist sings a song about this. But Second Chronicles 20, verse 15 to 25. Um, th- this is the background to the story. Jehoshaphat did what was right in the eyes of the Lord. He loved the Lord. In fact, he went one step further than his father, and he took down all the poles, Asher poles and whatever um, little shrines were put in high places. He took it all down. There was none of that in the kingdom. Okay, he sorted it all out. So he did what was right in the eyes of the Lord. Okay, and he obviously watched his father's reign a little bit too. But um, so there comes a point where Jehoshaphat, who's, who's really um, serving the Lord wholeheartedly, um, gets a message that they are surrounded by a vast army. Okay, so panic stations, you can imagine. I mean, if it was us, panic stations. Um, and Jehoshaphat gets the whole country to fast and pray. They fast and pray about what's going to happen. They, they turn immediately to the Lord. And church, when, we, when you have a battle in your life, whatever situation in you're in in life, if, if it just overwhelms you, turn to the Lord. Because this is what Jehoshaphat does. So he, he stops and he prays. Sound familiar, Anne? And gave me a word this morning, and, and it just rang so true to what I was speaking about today. So thank you. But now I take that word specifically for me, and uh, thank you so much for being obedient. And so, so Jehoshaphat gets this word. Listen, King Jehoshaphat, and all who live in Judah and Jerusalem, this is what the Lord says to you. Do not be afraid or discouraged because of this vast army, for the battle is not yours but God's. Like, what are you stressing about, people? This battle is not yours, it's God's. Okay? Tomorrow, march down against them. But I thought you said it's not our battle, Lord. Okay. They will be climbing up the pass by Ziz, and you will find them at the end of the gorge, and you will not have to fight this battle. Take up your positions, stand firm, and see the deliverance the Lord will give you, Judah and Jerusalem. You will not, do not be afraid, do not be discouraged. Go out and face them tomorrow, and the Lord will be with you. Jehoshaphat bowed down his face to the ground, and all the people of Judah and Jerusalem fell down in worship before the Lord. They get the word from the Lord, and they fall down in worship. Early in the morning, they leave, and they go to this desert, Tekoa. As they set out, Jehoshaphat stood and said, Listen to me, Judah and the people of Jerusalem. Have faith in the Lord your God, and you will be upheld. You'll have faith in his prophets, and you will be successful. After consulting the people, Jehoshaphat anointed men to sing to the Lord and to praise him for the splendor of his holiness as they went out at the head of the army saying, give thanks to the Lord for his love endures forever. So this is what we do. We all put on our armor. We're going to march out the whole army and we send the worship team in front with their guitars and mics. And um, that's how they went into battle. Hey, how cool is that? As they began to sing and praise, the Lord set ambushes against the men of Ammon and Moab and, and Mount Seir who were invading Judah and they were defeated the Ammonites and the Moabites rose up against the men from Mount Seir and de- to destroy and annihilate them. After they finished slaughtering the men of Seir, they helped, they helped to destroy one another. <laughs> I don't know if you're getting what's happening here. It sounds confusing, but they actually just started beating each other up. So 
TK and I beat up Simon, and once we beat up Simon, we beat each other up, is what happened. Hey? The Lord is fighting this battle for them. They have not lifted a hand yet. All they're doing is praising. Can you imagine the scene unfolding in front of them? When the men of Judah came back to the place that overlooks the desert and looked toward the vast army, they saw only dead bodies lying on the ground. No one had escaped. Even the last two guys managed to kill each other. So Jehoshaphat and his men went to carry off the plunder, and they found among them a great amount of equipment and clothing and also articles of value, more than they could take away. There was so much plunder, it took them three days to collect it. The army then became couriers, basically. <laughs> carrying stuff away. How exciting is that story that when you turn and trust in the Lord, He fights your battle for you. But we tend to do this sometimes where we tend to want to run in and hope that the Lord comes with us. And I like the word that He gives to um, Jehoshaphat um, when He says, um, let me find it here quickly. Take up your positions and stand firm and see the deliverance the Lord will give you. Judah and Jerusalem, stand firm. And sometimes that's what we just need to do. We need to stand firm and go to the Lord. We need to talk to the Lord. We need to pray to the Lord. The Israelites, they're busy leaving Egypt and the Egyptians are coming. They're going through a desert so they can see the dust cloud of the Egyptian army, hey? Moses answered the people, he said, do not be afraid, stand firm, and you will see the deliverance the Lord will bring you today. The Egyptians you see today, you will never see again. The Lord will fight for you, you need only to stand still. I love that story. I love reading these stories. I wish I knew how to do it often. I tend to look for something for three hours before I ask the Lord to help me which is silly. Or I fight a battle for myself and stress about it and get anxious about stuff before I turn to the Lord and just give it to Him. Jeremiah 33.3 Call to me and I'll answer you and tell you great and unsearchable things you do not know. It's one of my favorite scriptures. Call to me and I'll answer you to, and tell you great and unsearchable things you do not know. Proverbs 3, 5 and 6. Trust in the Lord with all your heart. Lean not on your own understanding. In all your ways submit to Him and He will make your path straight. I always look for the promise in a scripture. See if there's a promise because if there's a promise I can hold on to it. Take delight in the Lord, and He will... Oh, wait, sorry. Trust in the Lord with all your heart. Lean not on your own understanding. In all your ways, submit to Him, and He will make your path straight. I just have to submit to the Lord, and He will make my path straight. I take that as a promise. So when I come to a road that looks really hectic, I pray to the Lord. Lord, you said you would make my path straight, so I submit to you. Take delight in the Lord, and He will give you the desires of your heart. Commit your way to the Lord. Trust in Him, and He will do this. Proverbs 33, 20 and 22 says, We wait in hope for the Lord. He is our help and our shield. In Him our hearts rejoice, for we trust in His holy name. May your unfailing love be with us, Lord even as we put our hope in you. I mean, a lot of these psalms are written by David who really knew hardship and being overwhelmed and being chased and being hated. And and he wrote these things. Somehow he learned to delight in the Lord, find his strength in the Lord. Isaiah 26, 3 to 4. You will keep in perfect peace those whose minds are steadfast because they trust in you. Trust in the Lord forever, for the Lord, the Lord himself, is the rock eternal. Psalm 9, 9. 
The Lord is a refuge for the oppressed, a stronghold in times of trouble. May the Lord become our refuge. Psalm 39, 37, verse 39 to 40. The salvation of the righteous come from the Lord. He is their stronghold in time of trouble. The Lord helps them and delivers them. He delivers them from the wicked and saves them because they take refuge in Him. These are scriptures in the Word of God. The God-breathed scriptures of God. So if it's in you, we can hang on to them. If we can't get it right, it means we haven't practiced it enough. And today's a good day to start practicing. Psalm 55, 22, Cast your cares on the Lord and He will sustain you. He will never let the righteous be shaken. He will never let the righteous be shaken. Lord, you said you will never let the righteous be shaken. Why is this thing shaking me? Maybe it's because I haven't passed it on to the Lord. Luke 12, 22 to 31. Is that a scripture I gave you, Miles? Okay. Let's read this one together. Then Jesus said to his disciples, I'm bringing it a little bit closer to home because sometimes we think Old Testament was for other people. Um, so this is a Jesus talking to, the dis to his disciples and the crowds. Then Jesus, oh, to his disciples. Then Jesus said to his disciples, Therefore I tell you, do not worry about your life, what you will eat or about your body, what you will wear. For life is more than food and the body more than clothes. Consider the ravens. They do not sow or reap. They have no storeroom or barn, yet God feeds them. And how much more valuable are you than birds? Whom of you by worrying can add a single hour to your life? Since you cannot do this very little thing, why do you worry about the rest? Consider how the wild flowers grow. They do not labor or spin. Yet I tell you, not even Solomon in all his splendor was dressed like one of these. If that is how God clothes the grass of the field, which is yet today and tomorrow is thrown into the fire, how much more will he clothe you, you of little faith? And do not set your heart on what you will eat or drink. Do not worry about it, for the pagan world runs after all such things, and your Father knows that you need them. But seek his kingdom, and these things will be given to you as well. Church, when I read that, I, I, I wish I could say to you three steps to, um, to trusting in the Lord and not letting these things worry you. This is how you do it. This is how you let it go. But all I can, all I can say, church, this morning is this is things that we need to practice. We need to practice it more and more. So maybe you can relate to some of these stories. Um, that we read this morning. Maybe it just resonates in your spirit and that this is right and it also reminds you that the battle is the Lord's. Then it's also good. Then it's not a wasted sermon. But church, I think we need to stand. We need to get together and we need to stand firm um, and not get overwhelmed by what's, what's going on around us. And I also want to encourage you to not get overwhelmed by God's promises and prophetic words. So we got a prophetic word many, many years ago, and I've mentioned in church now recently, and a word that God excited and, and reminded me of a while ago, and it was um, that we would have a thousand children in church. Eh? And um, I don't know if that scares any of you, uh, a thousand children in church, like... How's that going to happen? How are we going to get a thousand children in church? I mean, if you're smart and you're good at math, you're like, well, where am I going to sit then? <laughs> we got a word many years ago when I was in youth ministry when we had just finished this building. Some guy said, this will be the youth center. And I was like, yes, give it to us now. <laughs> where are the adults going to go? <laughs> where are us old people going to go? Eh? It's a scary word, but I want to tell you the word for the thousand children. Um, I, I believe that this is something that we need to stand firm on, and we need to stand on the promises of God. And um, 
just a, a couple of words that have been said over the last couple of months in church. Uh, we had that guy, um, Gerard, come. Um, he was helping Premier with the school. Um, and he gave a word where he said um, he was speaking about children. And um, he said to us that God's going to do something big with children in, in Mkonda, in Wellspring. And we need, to, we need to soak it in prayer. And I want to encourage you, church, because when we think of a thousand children, um, do not get overwhelmed. Do not even worry about how it's going to happen. What we need to do is stand firm and soak it in prayer. That's what we need to do. We need to soak it in prayer, and, um, and, and it's going to happen. I believe this word, and this is just me speaking, I believe God's given us this word and brought it to light in this season reminded us in this season about that promise of a thousand children and he's saying to us church you can take this word Ach, you can take this promise and you can pursue it by standing firm and praying and praising the lord or you can pass it on to the next generation who's ready to pass it on to the next generation or should we take it huh? anybody want to pass it on to i don't think god would be angry with us if we did that pk i really don't I think be like, okay, you guys aren't ready. We give it to the next generation. A whole generation entered the promised land. You know that because their old folk were complaining. Old folk were complaining. If you're complaining, you're overwhelmed. <laughs> David complained in the Bible, but he complained to the Lord. Hey, If you find yourself sitting in a group of people complaining... You need to stop that bus right there and be like, guys, we're supposed to be standing firm and praying here. What are we complaining about? Complain to the Lord or don't complain at all? Okay, but when we get together, we stand firm and we pray. And we will see the Lord come through. And I don't know how it's going to look, but I believe it's going to come soon, church. And we have a lot of people praying about this word. And uh, so if you hear us talk about the thousand, don't freak out, okay? Don't freak out. We'll find you a chair. Okay. <laughs> All right. We'll find you a chair. But a thousand children in this church would pretty much take up the whole building, which would be really, really exciting. So, yeah, we'd have to get fans, air cons. I need one in my office. It'd be great, you know. So, I felt like I wanted to share this word this morning because... Because of the word that the Lord has given us. And I don't want us to shy away from what the Lord has given us. And I feel that this word that, that's been given to us is like a vast army that's around us. And we look at it and we're like, how are we going to overcome? But the Lord says, don't worry. This is, the battle is His. This is His promise. This is His prophetic word to the body. We just need to stand firm and pray. And uh, so if you are not praying, we have a, at the moment, we're praying on a Wednesday night. At the church, five o'clock, we want to invite you to come and pray with the intercessors. It's, I think it's going for the next three weeks. We started one this week, and, and then for the next three weeks, we'll be praying in the church. So if you want to join us at five o'clock on a, on a Wednesday afternoon, you can come in that back gate, um, and then the, we're praying in the church. And um, are you going to get them ready? Knowledge. Yeah. Um, so if you want to come and join them. But I'd like to encourage all of you to start to pray. To start to pray for the children because um, the children need Jesus. And um, they need Jesus. And if nobody's taking to Jesus to them, if we're just sitting around, the next generation is going to lose out on amazing kids. I think I shared in church a couple of weeks ago, I'm one of those amazing kids. My parents did not take me to church or didn't go to church with me. They dropped me off at Sunday school. And I was like freaking cute. Eh? I, I, I love Jesus. I tell you what, I, I always tell people, I used to make Jesus presents. Like where did that love for Jesus come from? It had to come from some Sunday school teacher. You know those old tomato boxes were made out of that very thin wood? Yeah, yeah. I used to take the tomato boxes apart and I used to make crosses. Why Jesus wanted another cross, I don't know. But I would make him these presents, and I'd leave them against the washing line for him to fetch. And, and in my eyes, every evening, he reached down and he fetched them. 
because the next morning they were gone. And I'm so grateful that he took it that I made him another one. I love Jesus. I, I really did. And where did that come from? It came from, not from my parents. There's children out there whose parents are not even interested in Jesus Christ. They don't know the love of Jesus. And I just believe the church is the answer. Not just this church, but that church is the answer. My dad used to throw those things away, I guess. Those crosses. But I thought Jesus was <laughs> taking them on to Dagnar. So I remember I used to walk backwards in the yard to see if I could look on top of a cloud. Because, you know, the further you move back. Because I always figured I'd see Jesus putting his clothes in his chest of drawers. And I, had a, I, I really had some interesting uh, thoughts go through my head. But it's because I wanted to see Jesus. I loved him. And, uh, but, but my parents never went to church. In fact, my dad only started going to church after my mom died. And I think it's because when he got married in the church, the pastor said, you better come to church. So he started, and then he also met Jesus. And uh, so that was pretty exciting. So a thousand children doesn't overwhelm us. The problems in the world don't overwhelm us. Finishing your year end shouldn't overwhelm you. Okay, we're just going to take it to the Lord. Whatever your problems are, we're going to take it to the Lord and just believe that he will take care of it. Is that cool? So um, I'm going to, um, I think, knowledge is busy changing so maybe michael and the worship team can come up and and sing a song but we're going to pray this morning and then uh, knowledge is going to get baptized musa got baptized last week and he's like on fire uh, sean got baptized last week and he's on fire for jesus hey yeah 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 so um he was on fire for jesus before he got baptized but yeah the lord this morning we come to you and we read these stories in the Word, Lord, and, and they obviously are put there so that we can learn from them, Lord. And Lord, we don't learn by saying King Asa was a bad king or he made silly mistakes, Lord, because we do that ourselves. And I pray, Lord, that we can learn from his mistakes and be encouraged by Jehoshaphat's story. Jesus, you said to us not to worry. We shouldn't worry about what we eat, what we're going to wear. None of those things. You said we should just seek first your kingdom. And so as we seek you, as we stand firm, Lord. So in other words, Lord, we're not going to move from the spot. We, we're going to stand firm in you. Jesus, you said um, that if we build a house on a rock, when the storm comes and the storms will come, they won't overwhelm us. We will still be standing. We don't want to fight battles just in the shadow of your rock. May we stand on your you, the rock of ages, and just stand firm and let you fight our battles for us. Lord, I pray out of this body that we will have many testimonies of how you have fought battles for us. How you made a way. Mm. How you came through in a situation that seemed impossible. And you took care of it for us. So we pray for those testimonies, Lord, and we pray in the meantime, Lord, would you teach us how to do this daily? May we stand firm and not get impatient. May we enc be encouraged and reminded that you, Lord, fight our battles for us. Our hope and our trust is in you. We pray it in Jesus' name. Amen. That's impressive, Michael, without even moving your fingers. <laughs> oh. Don Francisco.
say something to him. That's um. John Francisco. John Francisco. If you want to go Google it afterwards. Um, listen, what I need is this is this is this young man is knowledge. Um, he he actually looks young, but he's but thirty six is young for me. So uh, yeah. that's young. But um, uh, I almost called him Josh. Now, <laughs> may you be like him. But anyway. Um, knowledge is going to get baptized. He's going to tell us now why. But I would like when he comes out the water and the worship team is singing that we have a couple of men that just come and we're not just going to pray for this young man. We're going to prophesy into his life. Okay. So, um, Knowledge, would you like to tell the church why you're getting baptized? Thanks to, thanks to everyone eh, to give me this time. I'm Knowledge Mongers, eh? Knowledge, let me let me just translate for you. Okay. Thanks a lot. Okay. Yes. Uh, I like to Thanks to give me Thank you for this opportunity. Even though I'm a bit afraid of quite a lot of you. But I'm trying to be strong right now. My name is Knowledge Mongezi Ptelezi. In life, I've been through many difficult things. And uh, I've been to jail. I've been to hospital. And uh, And I realize that if I continue, or more than this, is that my life gets to a place where it ends. Yigo. Mm. And this is the reason why I'd like to give my life or have given my life to God. Because he is the redeemer and he is the one who has saved me. And he is, power, he is powerful as well. That's why I choose to be. <laughs> and that's why I've chosen to be. Yes, to baptize. Woo! Don't be nervous. Yes, I'm born. Greetings, everyone. My name is Musa Wengosi, and my surname is Shabalala. Yeah. The word of God has come to me. Uh, I was a person who was using drugs. Yes, I, I'm still trying to recover. I'm still on my journey in recovery to stop. So I decided to go to the to the pastor Sheldon about knowledge. So we, myself, and knowledge got um to Pastor Sheldon. Yes, And then we got God's word through him after church. Yes, so So I'm can I just explain, church? Uh, we have every Wednesday at 10, we um, have a gathering um, and we share the word of God um, with anybody and everybody that wants to come. Um, and I think what Musa is try essentially trying to explain that he, um, I was a witness, he did receive the Lord in one of those um, 
meetings that we have, which are really, really amazing, and God has done amazing work. So I just wanted to bring the clarity of um, how it all happened. It wasn't in church or after church. It's actually during those meetings. So you can continue, Musa. So Nkulunkul Namasa Ambona Noche Swaswapi and Tizwe no Figuaka, why it's all in Dao. So I, I met the Lord and the Lord came inside um, of my heart and uh, lived there. Uh, that's why in Anam Shang decided to would see Nunung in Nigelegoe, baptize Nibenga Nigankulungo. So that's why I've decided to surrender my life to Him today and get baptized and be um, a child of God. I thank the Lord very much. All right, so we're going to need uh, two groups of men to be praying for these guys. So first I'm going to baptize knowledge, and then I'm going to baptize Musa. And I don't take baptism lightly, and... Um, so I am happy to baptize these two because I know that they've surrendered their lives to Jesus Christ mm. and they have done it. They have surrendered their lives to Jesus Christ not to impress man, but because they know that they need Jesus. So uh, the water's warm, very warm. This is like a bath. But today, yeah, step on the chair. Today, this is your coffin. This is where you're dying. Musa Klam Acha knowledge climbing. So and then I'm gonna ask you to go on your knees. Go on your knees, Yebo. And um Knowledge, are you ready to die to your old self? Yes. Knowledge, I wanna say to you that as you are raised up new in Jesus mm. Christ, he does the work in you. Mm. Knowledge just completely surrender to Jesus and he is gonna do a miraculous work in your life. So knowledge of com on confession of your faith in the Lord Jesus Christ. I now baptize you in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> and Holy Spirit, we ask that you would come and that you would come in full knowledge from the top of his head to his toes. Heavenly Father, I believe that you see his heart and his heart bef is pure before you because he knows he cannot hide anything. Lord, he tells you about his weaknesses and he tells you about his dreams. And I pray, Lord, that his relationship with you mm. would be an amazing relationship, Lord. It would be close, Lord, that he would walk with you. That it would be said that knowledge, like David, is a man after God's own heart. Mm. We pray it in Jesus' name. Amen. All mm. right, knowledge, you stand up. There's going to be some men that are going to come and <laughs> pray for you now. Yeah, here's a bigger tell. Just come and... Yes, step on there. It's fine. We, we have these carpets for a reason. Come down, knowledge. Here we go. Here's your tell. And go stand over there, and then some men are going to pray with you. Really exciting. Mm. You know, baptism is not for perfect people. It's for those who want to die to their old self and mm. be raised up new in Jesus Christ. And this is where Musa finds himself, hey? Step on in, Musa. Musa, I've also heard your part. And... Um, and I'm happy to baptize you today too. And really believing that Jesus is going to set you free. And remember I said to you that people are going to prophesy of you. And we're going to see if they confirm the word that I gave you. Because I believe it. Okay. So let's go on your knees, Musa. If you feel like you need to block your nose, you can. But Musa, mm -hmm. upon confession of your faith in the Lord Jesus Christ. And the fact that I know that you understand that you're dying to your old self and being raised up new in Christ, and that you know that Jesus is going to do the work in you, that he's going to work in you until he comes again or you go to meet him. Mm. He's going to do the work in you. I baptize you in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit.
Musa, you have just died to your old self. And you have been raised up new in Jesus Christ. Walk in the goodness of the Lord, Musa. Walk in everything that the Lord has for you. Do not doubt. The Lord loves you, Musa. Holy Spirit, would you come and fill Musa from the top of his head to his toes? Would you give him power to witness? May your fruit be evident in his life. May your gifts freely flow in him. Holy Spirit, may he know today that he has died to his old self and been raised up new in Christ. May it be more than just going underwater. Would you do a deep work in his heart and his mind? Would you set him free? Amen. Amen. Musa. Yep, there we go. Here's a towel for you. I'm so proud of these guys because just seeing what the Lord is doing in their lives and, and just how hungry they are for the Lord. And um, yeah, Michael, would you lead us in some worship? And then we're going to have some tea and coffee together. Yeah. Okay. All right. Thank you, everybody. Have a blessed week. We'll see you all next week again.